viva la raza! Que viva la raza! I'm here to welcome all the new voters of 18 years old that we're registering now in our schools. Welcome, you're going to make a difference for Los Angeles, for San Antonio, for New York. And I thank Southwest for taking that challenge. And to the Metistas across this nation, you are going to make that difference for us too. But when we register one more million voters, I will not be the only Latina on the Board of Education of Los Angeles. And let me tell you here, no one will dismantle bilingual education in the United States of America. No one will deny an education to any child, especially Latino children. As you know, in Los Angeles, we make up 70% of this school district. Out of 600,000, 400,000 are Latinos, and our parents are not heard. And they're going to be heard because in Los Angeles, San Antonio and Texas, we have just classified 53 houses, 53,000 new citizens in one year that are going to be found in November. And we have 27 centers now throughout LAUSD. Every one of them has trained people, clerks, to take the fingerprints. Each one has the camera, that special camera. We have the application form. I'll tell you what we've done with INS. Now we're even doing the testing that usually people had to go to INS to take. And pretty soon, hopefully, we'll do the final interview in our schools. <laughs> Since then, an incident has started this very quietly because there are those that we knew that if we were creating a whole new cadre of brand new citizens, that it would have tremendous political impact. We would change the, the political panorama not only of L.A., but L.A. County and the state. And we do that, we change the panorama of the nation. I'm proud to stand here and tell you that in those close to three years, we have processed a little over 78,000 brand new citizens. That is the largest citizenship program in the entire nation. I was thinking about the Brown Berets. We're here today to show L.A., show the minority people here, the Anglo-Saxons, that we are here, the majority. We're here to stay. We do the work in this city. We take care of the spoiled brat children, we clean their offices, we pick the food, we do the manufacturing in the factories of L.A. We are the majority here, and we are not going to be pushed around. We're here in Westwood, this is the fourth time we've been here in the last two months, to show white Anglo-Saxon Protestant L.A., the few of you who remain, that we are the majority, and we claim this land is ours, it's always been ours, and we're still here. And uh, none of this talk about deporting. If anybody's going to be deported, it's going to be you. <laughs> Go back to Simi Valley, you skunk! Go back to Woodland Hills! Go back to Boston! Go back to the Plymouth Rock! Welcome! Get out! We are the future! You're old and tired! Go on! We have beaten you! Leave like beaten rats! The old white people, it is your duty to die. Even their own ethics is saying that they should die. That they have a duty to die. They're taking up too much space, too much air. We are the majority in L.A. There's over 7 million Mexicans in L.A. County alone. We are the majority. And you're going to see every day more and more of it as we, we manifest, as our young people grow up and graduate from high school, go on to college and start taking over the society. Our people are the, the vast majority of people are under the age of 15 years. Years old. Right now, we're already controlling those elections. Whether it's through violence or non-violence, through love of having children, we're going to take over. This is our plan. This is Mexico. They're the pilgrims on our land. Go back to the Nina, the Pizza, the Santa Maria. There's only two forms of power in this country and in this world. One is economic power. We certainly don't have the economic power because we don't own the means of production. But there's another form of power. And that is the power of the masses. So, you can be as revolutionary as you want. You can be Chicano nationalist. You can be Mexican American. You can be Hispanic. You can believe it. You can believe in the concept of Aztlan. 
You can believe in the concept of multiculturalism. Somebody could say, everybody here is wrong, and I am the only one, you know, that has reached revolutionary completeness. But the bottom line is that if we do not mobilize our communities, we are not putting together, uh, setting the parameters to establishing a massive movement in our community. That's what this is about. And that's why I am here today, to talk about who here wants to organize the masses and who here is interested in developing that movement that somebody earlier said that the sleeping giant is in a coma. I'll tell you that on October the 16th, 150,000 representatives from the sleeping giant were not in a coma, but rather were marching down the streets of Los Angeles saying that enough is enough and we're no longer going to tolerate the racism against our community. The very essence of the dignity of our community is in danger right now. Luckily, we don't have to give our lives. We're not at that point, but we can give a little. What I would like to ask everybody here to give, it's not necessarily your life, but to give one moment of thought to what the importance of a national march on Washington, D.C. in 1996 would mean for the mass movement of our community. Get ten people, ten people ready to go with us to that march in Washington, D.C. in 96, and I guarantee you, just as we mobilized 150 people to the streets of Los Angeles in October 16th, we can mobilize one million people and bring Washington, D.C. to a standstill, and those rednecks that are out there making decisions for the betterment of their communities will think twice before they push forward anti-immigrant legislation against our community, and so that we can show our people that the time has come for us to come together on what brings us together instead of to sit down and bump heads. And I tell the students in the colleges, if you're still debating the question of whether they're Chicanos or Mexicanos or Chicanos slash Mexicano, we're not learning from the lessons of 10, 15 years ago. The time has come for unity. There's too many things that separate people, but we have to begin to look at what brings us together. And so I ask everybody here, how many of you agree that we can leave here with one thing today, that in 1996, we are going to Washington, D.C., on a mass mobilization there to bring Washington to a standstill so that they know that we're there and that we begin to put into place those things that are necessary to ensure that we advance the interests of our community. Raise your hand, those of you that agree with what I'm saying. La Mexicana. Por su parte, el gobernador Gray Davis dijo, In the near future, people will look at California and Mexico as one magnificent region. In the... June 21st issue of Time magazine, the lead story of which is entitled A Mexica, it describes the de facto elimination of the border between Mexico and the United States. I believe that the debate revolving around our immigration policy should reflect the fact that this phenomenon is underway. President Fox yesterday stated that he came to the United States to, quote, play a more active role in establishing the new international architecture, unquote. I believe that this new international architecture can be described as a Mexico.